Born November 4, 1905 in Aniston, Blue Mountain, Alabama, Nancy Hazel was one of five children with three sisters and one brother. As an adult, Nanny Doss was eventually given the nickname the Giggling Grandma, a misnomer as this was a very dark and evil woman. She was also called by some media outlets Arsenic Annie, a far more accurate and concise nickname for this infamous serial killer. After her capture, Nanny Doss would later tell interviewers that her life was made up of an eternal search for, quote, the real romance of life. The price of this supposed eternal search would be in the form of the lives of Nanny's four husbands, of two of her children, of her two sisters, her mother, her nephew, and her infant grandson. Some wonder if her murderous intentions originated from an early childhood injury that occurred when Nanny's family was riding a train to visit relatives. When the passenger chain came to a sudden and abrupt stop, the youngster was thrown forward and slammed her forehead on a metal bar, which was located on the back of the seat in front of her. For years afterwards, she would suffer bouts of depression, as well as numerous headaches and even instances of blackouts. She would later claim in court, some say erroneously, that this injury was a main cause of her poisonous predilections. As a teenager, she recalls that she picked up her mother's love of romance novels and would spend hours at home as an adolescent, reading and dreaming of future love. Her father, strict and controlling, forbade Nanny and her sisters from wearing makeup and kept them inside as much as possible in an effort to separate them from the dangers of the public and the men that populated it. But his attempts would be in vain, as Nanny recalls that by the time she was 16, she had been sexually abused by several older men. Her first official romance was found in the arms of her first husband, whom she met at the young age of 16 and married after knowing him for only four months. Husband number one was named Charles Braggs, and with him, Nanny had four children. In the span of time from 1923 to 1927, these very children would become her first victims. Over time, due somewhat in part to a horrendously controlling and abusive mother-in-law who dominated the lives of the couple, Nanny developed a drinking problem and would often chain smoke cigarettes and drink from sun up until sundown and throughout the evening hours well into dawn. In this time, she was hostile to her spouse and neighbors spoke of late night quarrels over each spouse's perceived infidelity with Charles disappearing from the marital home for days at a time. In 1927, Nanny's husband suffered the pain of discovering the victims of Nanny's first set of murders, as twice within a period of months, upon returning home from work, he would find one of his daughters, his second and his third eldest child, dead, both times apparently from accidental poisoning. In both cases, he recalled that the child cried upon his leaving and that Nanny would tell him later they died while having convulsions. After the first, and more so after the second death, Nanny's husband was highly suspicious of her story. He eventually would leave his wife and took with him the couple's firstborn daughter, Melvina. He would cut all contact with Nanny, who was still at home with her mother-in-law, healing after having given birth to her newest child, Florine, who was a newborn at the time. Today, criminal profilers wonder if postpartum depression may have played a role in the poisoning of her two children, but at the time, such afflictions were not spoken of, and there was no investigation into the supposed accidental deaths of two innocent children, which occurred so closely together. After her two children's untimely passing, Nanny received two life insurance payouts and ended up moving to Cedartown, Georgia, where she would meet and marry her second husband, Robert Franklin Harrelson, in 1929. Less than 18 months after her second wedding, Nanny would abandon her youngest child, Florine, only two years old at the time, alone in the couple's home, and would take to the road with her new husband, unencumbered by the innocent children she'd previously brought into the world. Neighbors of the newlyweds were able to save the child by tracking down her father, Charles Braggs, and he was able to come get her. She was not permanently harmed from the ordeal, at least not physically. In this period of time, Nanny continued her murderous spree. According to family members who were present at the birth of her granddaughter, 
Nanny Doss was reported as having brutally murdered her own newborn granddaughter in the very hospital she was born in. This so-called giggling grandma was said to have done this by taking a sharp hairpin and sticking it in the baby's fontanelle, also known as its soft spot, a part of the skull not fully closed off from the brain after birth. Later, in 1945, Nanny's daughter, Melvina, would entrust her mother with care of her own toddler, Nanny's grandson, two-year-old Robert Lee. He would stay with his grandmother for only three days before accidentally ingesting rat poison and passing away. After the child's death, his grandmother, the consummate griever, collected a $500 life insurance policy that she had taken out on him, roughly equivalent to $7,800 in today's money. Frank Harrelson, Nanny Doss's second husband, also died in 1945 on September 15th, the same year that Doss killed her own grandson. Well, it was reported that Doss's second husband suffered a seemingly unexpected illness, which left him dead within the week. In all actuality, the illness was anything but unexpected, nor was it unexplained. Nanny had added odorless and tasteless arsenic rat poisoning to his corn liquor. Insurance policies paid Nanny $2,000, which was about $25,000 in today's money. Using this ill-begotten life insurance payout, Nanny purchased 10 acres of land in Jacksonville and on it was able to build a new home for herself in which to continue her murderous predilections. Nanny's third husband, Arlie Lanning, whom she met using the Lonely Hearts column in the newspaper, and whom she married after knowing for only three days, died in Lexington, North Carolina in 1952. After his death, their marital home mysteriously went up in flames. And in addition to the $1,500 that she collected from his life insurance policy, she reaped another $1,000 from the settlement of a fire insurance policy a net gain of nearly $27,000 for the ever-grieving widow. Mere months after her third husband's death, she would kill her own mother in January of 1953, utilizing her access to the woman as she was her primary caregiver during her convalescence period after she had broken her hip. In this period of time, two of Nanny's sisters died in the same year, each in different towns, each while Nanny was visiting them. Their symptoms mirrored each other, stomach cramps and convulsions. By the time 1953 rolled around, the very busy nanny had set her sights on a new target, husband number four, Richard L. Morton Sr., 69, of Emporia, Kansas. Nanny had come to know him through yet another advertisement placed in the Lonely Hearts Club portion, this time of the Diamond Circle Club publication. His life was insured for $1,500, which is equivalent to nearly $16,000 in today's money. Poisoned like the rest of them by his beloved wife, his ominous last words were recalled as being, quote, I shouldn't have drunk that second cup of coffee. He died May 19, 1953, and was laid to rest in his hometown of Emporia, Kansas. Nanny married her fifth and final husband, Samuel Doss, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in July of 1954. Just one month later, on October 10, 1954, he too would pass away from mysterious, yet strangely familiar circumstances. Nanny mixed her poison of choice in with her fifth husband's daily bowl of prunes and his cup of coffee. Quote, he sure did love those stewed prunes Nanny wistfully recalls about him after his death. After his surreptitious death, the on-call doctor, possibly already suspicious of Nanny Doss, ordered an autopsy, and the toxicology report later revealed that Samuel Doss's body contained enough arsenic to kill 20 men. At the same time that she was in the process of killing her fifth husband, Samuel Doss, the repeat grieving widow to be again was reportedly setting her sights on her sixth husband, a dairy farmer from North Carolina. Reports detail that she had already begun cooking homemade meals for him as she had mailed him a cake. Those who knew the farmer say that he was eager to meet the woman he thought he might eventually marry. After seeing the toxicology results of Samuel Doss, authorities promptly arrested Nanny 
and on May 17, 1955, she pled guilty to the murder of her husband, Samuel, and while she was sentenced to life in prison by the state of Oklahoma, she was not given the death penalty due to her gender and the politics surrounding that issue at the time. It would not be for many years that Nanny would admit that she had also ended her third marriage by putting rat poison in Harrelson's corn whiskey, which he kept buried underground between swigs. At the same time, she admitted that her two-year-old grandson, quote, just might have gotten hold of some rat poison. In all, she would confess to killing four of her five husbands, her mother, her sister, her grandson Robert Lee, and her mother-in-law, her third husband's mother. She insists that there was no monetary motivation to her numerous crimes, and says in regards to her many husbands that she was simply acting on the tales she loved to read about in her true romance magazines. Quote, that's about it, Nanny told those questioning her. Quote, I was searching for the perfect mate, the real romance of life. This, however, does not account for the many non-romantic life insurance payouts that she received. Nanny Doss would go on to serve 10 years of her life sentence in prison before succumbing to leukemia in 1965 at the age of 59. 